Tonight, a regional store is stepping up and donating to the Duluth Police Department in hopes of filling a void left by a canine officer. Plus, taking the stand today in the trial of Derek Chauvin was a lung specialist who testified to the last moments of George Floyd's life. And later, good news for bookworms today. You'll soon be able to browse Duluth's libraries in person. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. Thanks for joining us. The Duluth Police Department is looking to fill a big hole in their force. K-9 Luna died in an officer-involved shooting in February, and since then, the department has been down a team. And finding a dog to replace her is no small task. CBS 3's Emma Quinn shares how one regional business is hoping to help and keep our community safe in the process. Helping those who help us every day. Quick Trip convenience store officials spent Thursday morning making a $5,000 donation to the Northland Canine Foundation. We would like to take this opportunity to thank the Duluth Police Department for their service and to provide a donation that will positively impact our community. The donation will help the Duluth Police Department purchase a new canine. The DPD recently lost canine Luna during an officer-involved shooting in February, and while they're still reeling from that loss, they need to fill the hole she left and find a new canine. Really, it was a significant loss for us and our organization for the community. Luna's former handler, Officer Aaron Holler, says the donation and support from the community means they can continue their work with other dogs. We wouldn't have the amount of dogs we do, the training that we're able to go through and all that. It's, it's can't really put into words how beneficial it is. Police Chief Mike Tuskin said a canine can cost anywhere from fifteen to twenty thousand dollars and any support they receive helps immensely. So it's a substantial investment for us to to acquire it but then also to train it. And we do all our training down in St. Paul, which requires us doing room and board with them for about 12 weeks. For Quick Trip officials, it's all about helping the community in a time when they need it most. Chief Tuscan says the department is in the early stages of finding a new canine. The Canine Northland Foundation is also helping the St. Louis County Sheriff's Office find a new canine as they lost canine Wesson earlier this week due to cancer. Prosecutors called a lung specialist to the stand in the murder trial of Derek Chauvin. Dr. Martin Tobin broke down moment by moment the last minutes of George Floyd's life. Using photos, diagrams, and a computer rendering of Floyd's arrest, the pulmonologist and critical care specialist testified Derek Chauvin's knees and at times full weight were on Floyd's body. Officer Chauvin's left knee is virtually on the neck for the vast majority of the time. And uh, and when you say vast majority, are you able to be more It's more than 90% of the time in my calculations. The doctor testified those actions nearly completely closed a portion of Floyd's airway and crushed his lungs, making it impossible for him to get enough oxygen. Chauvin's defense has tried repeatedly to claim Floyd died from underlying health issues and illegal drug use. However, Tobin pointed out Floyd was breathing normally before he died and fentanyl would have slowed his breathing rate down significantly. Minnesota's governor is highlighting a budget proposal he says is good for the economy and the environment. Governor Tim Walls visited a gas station in New Hope talking about his biofuels infrastructure grant program. It's part of his budget proposal. It would provide $2 million in funding, giving gas station owners across the state money to install biofuel pumps. Cornstarch ethanol can reduce greenhouse gas emissions. According to the governor's office, Minnesota's ethanol industry generated almost $4.5 billion in revenue last year, and it supports more than 14,000 jobs. Dave's here for a quick check of the weather. Dave, nice to see this rain is starting to bring up some greenery around the region. Yeah, it's paying off, though it's yeah. going to stay gray up aloft for another day or so, with more rain possible. Let's take a live look at the Ely area. You know, I always like to this time of year, I up Robinson Lake. Just a couple days ago, it was still iced over, but the, the ice was pretty dark. Now it's gone. Ice out for Robinson Lake. And you can see a little bit of green popping up along Highway 169 there. A good sign. 
a good sign that this rain we've been getting is being put to good use and we're going to get more rain maybe another quarter to a half inch on top of what we've already received through tomorrow night our short-term forecast shows it will stay gray and cloudy tonight with lows in the 40s for most towns 90 percent chance for more rain 90 percent chance for some towns tomorrow as well though it starts to taper off later tomorrow night especially first for wisconsin and michigan does that mean sunshine for the weekend well yes and no and we'll try to make a, a more firm answer out of that coming up in a couple more minutes. Thanks, Dave. Minnesota is leading the nation in vaccine efforts, distributing more than 3 million doses. Governor Tim Walz announced that milestone today. It comes exactly three weeks after the state hit 2 million doses administered. The state reached the first million in February. Minnesota is in the top 10 states for the number of people fully vaccinated per 100,000. And despite that, COVID cases are on the rise in Minnesota, with the state reporting the highest single-day total since January. Health officials reported 2,500 new cases today. Hospitalizations are also up, with 565 people currently needing care. State officials say variants are driving that increase. They say the effort to vaccinate people is now a race against those variants, hoping to prevent another spike in cases and deaths. When the pandemic started, stores quickly ran out of disinfecting wipes and household cleaners. But now experts say the risk for catching COVID-19 from surfaces is low. The CDC says studies estimate each time you touch a contaminated surface, your chances of getting infected are less than 1 in 10,000, which is why it now says cleaning high-touch surfaces once a day with regular soap or cleaner should be enough. Now, if you look at that guide, it doesn't, it doesn't say surfaces make no difference. It says that they're not as important and that for most surfaces, standard soap and water once a day are good enough. The CDC added disinfecting likely is not necessary unless you think the surface has been contaminated by COVID-19. Bookworms will be happy to learn Duluth's public library system is turning another page closer to normalcy. CBS 3's Alex Libby has more on what you can expect and how the libraries are planning to keep you safe. The days of browsing shelves searching for a new book are returning to Mount Royal in West Duluth branches of Duluth Public Library. So we are thrilled for people to be able to come in and smell the library and how books smell. <laughs> people miss that. We miss that when we were not here. The two branches on either end of the town have been closed entirely during the pandemic, meaning no curbside service or access to resources. Mayor Larson says that left many people without a place to find educational tools. Libraries are a huge key to helping people connect back to lifelong learning, to increase literacy, to feel like they have the resources that they need. But now, both the West Duluth and Mount Royal branches will operate under what is called a Library Express model. When people come in, they'll see spaces that look a little bit different and services that are not the same as they were in 2019. Yes. All chairs, computers, and play areas have been removed to allow for faster visits when browsing for new items, getting a library card, or picking up a book you've reserved. Computers can still be used by appointment only at the downtown location. After a year of shuttered doors, library leaders say they're expecting a lot of visitors with limited occupancy. They say you should be prepared to wait outside. And so there might be some wait times with that if it's a very busy time. You might be expected to wait socially distanced and then be able to go once another person has left the branch. Mayor Larson says even with limited services, opening up libraries is an important step to getting back to normal. Libraries are the community's living room. It's a space where you just get to exist. You don't have to uh, pay a membership. You don't have to prove your worth. You just get to walk in and be. Library Express locations will start operating on Monday. For more details and exact hours of both locations, we have a link on our website. And by the way, the downtown location will still be offering curbside pickup, but only for the time being. Thanks to community support, the Duluth Library Foundation smashed its goal of raising $25,000 in 24 hours. Yesterday was Library Give Day. The foundation raised more than $35,500 in a single day. That money will help get every child ready to learn by the time they reach kindergarten. 
It'll also help the library safely reopen after the pandemic. UWS will host the state of Wisconsin's fifth community-based vaccine clinic, and it opens next week. Governor Tony Evers made that announcement today. The clinic will be in Westman Arena. It will start out administering 200 shots a day with the ability to increase to 500 daily, depending on supply. It opens April 13th and will be open Tuesday through Saturday from 11 to 7. Anyone 16 and older can get vaccinated in Wisconsin. To make an appointment, visit the state's COVID vaccine registry. We have a link to that on our website. Wisconsin today reported the highest number of new COVID cases in two months. The state confirmed 1,046 new cases. The seven-day average is twice as high as a month ago. Health officials also blamed more contagious variants for the increase and asked everyone to get vaccinated as soon as possible. 35% of Wisconsinites have received at least one dose of a vaccine. Still to come on live local CBS3, as the temperatures rise across the Northland, so will the amount of road work. Will it affect your commute? Find out next. The little side temperature of 42 today was cooler than normal, but did that hold true for the rest of the region? Did we have warmth on the fringes like yesterday? We'll take a look at our top temps coming up in just a minute. Too. Local news and local weather here on CBS3. Welcome to Medical Insight, a weekly healthcare feature brought to you by the experts at Essentia Health. Here's your host, Louis St. George. Today on Medical Insight, Kenzie Holman tells us about the Essentia Health Specialty Pharmacy, which manages medications for complex and chronic conditions. Specialty pharmacy is an ambulatory pharmacy service like a traditional retail pharmacy. The big difference is in the conditions that we treat and the medications that we're providing. Specialty medications tend to be more complex in administration, in their regimen, or um, simply have more difficult side effects to manage. Patients that are receiving specialty medications include oncology, hematology, uh, multiple sclerosis, a number of chronic inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, Crohn's disease, um, as well as other conditions like growth hormone deficiency. The specialty pharmacy team at Essentia includes professionals who assist and advocate for patients, saving them millions of dollars over the years. Many of the specialty medications are very high cost, and so our navigators and liaisons are very integral in helping the patients access these high cost therapies. I think one of the most fulfilling pieces is helping patients connect them with the resources that allow them to be successful with their medications. Patients can get their medications delivered directly to their home or they can pick it up at any of our 21 pharmacy locations. Um, our pharmacy locations can provide over-the-counter medications or non-specialty prescriptions as well, and patients can get their meds by curbside delivery at those locations if they choose. The specialty pharmacy is located in Superior, but serves patients from all over. For Medical Insight, I'm Louis St. George. To learn more about this and other health topics, visit EssentiaHealth.org slash Medical Insight. a reason to grab the DQ chicken and biscuits basket with 100% all white meat chicken strips, golden fries, warm pepper gravy, and oh yeah, seven fluffy mini biscuits. But if you do want a reason, mini biscuits turn any meal into a mini celebration all on their own. Hooray for mini biscuits, part of the DQ chicken and biscuits basket. DQ, happy tastes good. Get it delivered at DQ.com. A victim. Some monster killed two little kids. Has anyone seen Starling? The AG went to right front on this. Very high profile. It's him. So you found him. It's the guy, the one who... No, 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 no. He's not your guy. Kremler knows him somehow or something. Are we worried that Kremler is in bed with this guy? A new Clarice. Tonight, 10, 9 central or stream anytime on CBS. CBS 3 News is brought to you by Fond du Luth Casino. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by Heritage Window and Door. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. 
For the past few days, we've had a trio of low pressure systems work through the area, bringing up clouds and bringing down rain. Rain we need, but it's also been bringing down temperatures for a good portion of the region, but not everybody. Once you get down to the south, places like Hayward have done all right temperature wise. High temp today, 57. And into the UP, well, Gogeba County's not been so bad either. 63 to 66 for high temps here today. Down a bit from yesterday when Watersmeet did push into the low 70s. But for the rest of us, we had a range of high temps only 39 to 45 degrees, at least for most places. Hibbing did beat that at 49, Grand Rapids at 48. But it's been just a little bit chilly feeling with the gloom and the rain. We did need it. We grinned and bared it. We only have to bear it one more day. Tomorrow, it should slowly end with the rain but the clouds will take even longer to get out of here and I don't think there's any major warm-up coming our way except uh, tentatively on Sunday we could go into the mid 50s region wide we'll show you that with the seven day in just a bit but of course we're showing you first the current conditions at Duluth's airport temps down to 40 now relative humidity static at 97 percent it's awfully juicy out there so fog is a definite problem especially closer to the lake easterly wind 14 miles per hour though would try to blow the wind away if this was just a simple radiation fog, but it's an advection fog, which means it's blown in with moisture from the wind, and it won't go away till the winds shift, and that may happen Saturday. Okay, barometric pressure 29.57. It's low from the low-pressure system that's bringing us the rain. Current temps, 60 in the Upper Peninsula, 56 for Hayward, but you get into the rest of northern Wisconsin, it's the upper 30s for most places. And we have the upper 30s in east-central Minnesota, lower 40s up the North Shore. Eveleth, Virginia, still on the warmer side at 51, but uh, that'll go away as the night goes on. I think a lot of places will have low temps, upper 30s, to about 40 or so. Current situation with the last of the three low pressure systems still sitting and spinning on its axis down towards Iowa and bringing in these waves of rain where we get calmer conditions for a little while and then a round of rain comes back again. Expect that to keep going tonight and through most of tomorrow as well. But once we get into the weekend, weak high pressure should dry us up for Saturday and Sunday until the next low comes to call on Monday bringing us a rain and snow mix as overnight low temps dip into the 30s, perilously close to the freezing mark. But I don't think any snow is going to add up. And this is how much more rain may add up by tomorrow night, maybe another quarter to a half inch or so on top of what we've already received. Tonight, Minnesota-wise, we get low temps. I'm thinking upper 30s through lower 40s, 80% chance for more rain region-wide, with Wisconsin-Michigan low temps, 42 to 47. Then tomorrow, 48 to 55 for the Wisconsin-Michigan highs, 50-50 shot at more rain, 80% chance for more Minnesota rain with highs from 48 to about 50, a little bit cooler by the lake. And the extended forecast, well, if we don't really clear up Saturday, Sunday, at least we dry up. There's Sunday, partial sunshine and 55, the best day of the week, because by Monday and Tuesday, 50 to 60% chance for a rain-snow mix, Kristen. The snow part of the mix probably at night, rain during the day. All right, thanks, Dave. Nothing says summer in Minnesota quite like road work. Well, today, MnDOT announced they have more than 200 construction projects across the state on their agenda this year. In our area, some of the big projects include the Twin Ports Interchange. We'll see construction there from now until 2024. This summer, crews will repave Highway 53 in Pike Lake. They'll also work on Highway 61 near two harbors. Grand Marais and Grand Portage can also expect road work. If and when you encounter construction, MnDOT asks you to limit distractions and slow down. We just ask that everyone focus on driving um, and slow down when you're going through the work zone. Um, we want to keep the traveling public safe as well as the folks in the work zone working on construction safe. So. MnDOT says these projects will help maintain Minnesota's roads and bridges, improve safety, and support thousands of construction jobs. UMD is bleeding maroon and gold. The school's pre-med club is hosting a blood drive today from 11 to 5 p.m. in the Kirby Ballroom. The UMD community is coming together to support the Red Cross mission. Organizers said they expect a big turnout since drives like these are usually always full. Pre-med club president Madison Cease says they organize two blood drives per year and they encourage the community to give back when they can. Coming up in sports, it's time for the Frozen Four. UMD gets set to take on UMass in the semifinals. Kelly is in with a preview next. Order your 2021 Polaris side-by-side -side now from Duluth Lawn and Sports.
CBS3 live cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. You already know that Carrie Toyota and Superior is a great place to buy and service your vehicle, but we have a lot more to offer every driver and not just people with Toyotas. We have the Yakima line of products for the adventure seekers, including roof racks, bike and kayak racks, and cargo carriers. We also have running boards, bed steps, and access brand tonneau covers like I put on my truck. And for those of you who like a clean vehicle, we have professional detailing services and all-weather floor liners from Toyota and WeatherTech. Carry Toyota and Superior. We have something for every driver. Thursdays are a favorite day at Fond du Luth Casino because they're loaded with kiosk cash. Every Thursday, qualified Players Club members can swipe their card at the kiosk, play the game, and may win up to $500 in cash. You can even participate up to three times each date. For more details, stop by the Players Club or log on to FondeLuthCasino.com. Come in for the excitement of Thursday kiosk cash and make Thursday your best day of the week while you have a great time out at Fond du Luth. More Americans are growing their own vegetables than ever before. At Garden Mats, we're here to help people supplement their food supply with fresh, organic vegetables. Whether you are a beginner, novice, or master gardener, Garden Mats make gardening a breeze. Spend your summers trying to keep up with each other, not your weeds. Go to GardenMats.com and plan your garden today. Summer's almost here, and with Renewal by Anderson, when you buy more, you save more. Receive 20% off your window and door project, including installation, plus an additional $100 off each unit when you purchase four or more windows or patio doors, or $150 off each unit when you purchase eight or more. With no money down, no payments, and no interest financing for 12 months, that's like getting free windows for a year. Call before April 30th to book your free, no-contact virtual consultation, or visit us at NorthlandRBA.com. Kids and dogs, you gotta love them. But when in the wear is too much and it's time to replace those floors, visit Cloquet Flooring for fresh ideas. Hello, I'm Shelly. We all know replacing flooring in your home is a sizable investment. With all pet protection and warranty, covering all pets, all accidents, all the time, we've got you covered. Contact Cloquet Flooring today to get your free in-home estimate or visit us online at cloquetflooring.com. See our virtual showroom. Serving with hometown pride, Cloquet Flooring. is being challenged by DFL. The race is on. Learn how Berkey 2021 is it safe is to be ice fishing on Lake Superior? New funding is bringing more mental I'm health resources. Dave Anderson. How a popular new recreational area is allowing Here, how one vaccination clinic in West Duluth is one focusing year into the COVID-19 pandemic and food insecurity is still new mission. year, new ownership. To stay up to date with the news and weather that impacts you and your community, join us weekdays for CBS3 Live at 5. Gail King, Anthony Mason, and Tony DeCopel. Weekday mornings on CBS. Now, CBS 3 Sports with Kelly Hinson. We are less than two hours from puck drop on the biggest stage of college hockey. The Frozen Four, where UMD is making their fourth straight appearance. Something we definitely can't take for granted, even if this feels like somewhat of an annual experience now. Before their first title in 2011, UMD only made the Frozen Four three times in 26 years. Now in 2021, it's the Frozen Four number eight for the Bulldogs. They're taking on UMass in the semifinals tonight. The Minutemen have only been to the stage one other time, which was in 2019 when they lost to UMD in the championship game. Regardless of history, though, head coach Scott Sandlin says that he sees a lot of similarities between UMD and UMass this year. Their team is built a lot like our teams of the past, right? Their strength, uh, goaltending and D and, and a really balanced forward attack, some dangerous players. Um, but they're really, they've got really good depth and uh, I, like, I like how they play. You know, my four years here, I had the chance to be on a lot of good teams, um, just like this year, a lot of ups and downs. Um, you know, whoever we're playing, though, we have the trust in one another, and we believe we can beat anybody. So I think it's just having that belief every game, um, you know, we can beat anyone when we play our game. UMass will be without their top goal scorer and starting goaltender tonight due to COVID-19 protocols. Now with each game that UMD is set to play, fans wait on bated breath on whether or not each of their player and personnel member passes the COVID protocols as set by the NCAA. And one guy is staying back here in the 218 because of those protocols, and that 
is Ryan Fanti. As first reported by the Duluth News Tribune, the sophomore goaltender did not travel with the team to Pittsburgh and remains in Duluth. The team has been tested three times since arriving in Pittsburgh. UMD will dress three goaltenders tonight, including Zach Stayskal and Ben Pat. Stayskal and Fanti have split time in goal this season. Fanti shared exclusively with CBS3 that it has been a dream of his for a long time and it's getting ripped away for the second year in a row. He got well, has a lot of confidence in the guys and his goalie partners and know that they can get it done. And we talk a lot about the players, the staff, the fans, the students, but what about the parents of these players? They've been put through more in terms of stress and anxiety, more than the team arguably over the last year. I had the chance to chat with Julia Rail, mom of Louis Rail, ahead of the defenseman's third consecutive Frozen Four. She said that it feels a little different this year with COVID. It's just a roller coaster of emotions, um, especially like the past year that the players have been through and we've all been through. I mean, we haven't seen the boys very often, just a couple days over Christmas. We want to be just thankful that we're here and yet we still really want to win. <laughs> And the parents, like she said, haven't been able to watch the boys in, or be with the boys in person since December. So they are looking forward to some hugs this weekend, hopefully with a national title. And switching gears a bit, hey, hey, it is opening day for the Minnesota Twins. Seattle Mariners coming to town in front of fans at last. Kyle Garlic, that is a name we've been saying a few times over the past few days. The new guy busts one just short of the left field bleachers. Still enough for a run to score. And the Twins are on the board to tie it at one. Still in the third, Mitch Garver has a runner on first and third. It's a blast to center field. And gone for the three-run shot to make it four to one. Refrain delay would put a pause on this one, but at last check, Twins had a nice lead, eight to two in the seventh. All I can say is let's do the hockey. Yeah. I mean, we've done we've done the prep. It's time. It's puck drop time. Kelly, you're dressed for the occasion, too. A little this gold for This is my championship huh? weekend uh, <laughs> attire. You can expect if they win tonight on Saturday, there will be sequins then as Once well. Once again. It's no better time to sparkle. I couldn't agree more. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> tonight on the CBS 3 News at 10, a memorial for a young Iron Range man killed in an officer-involved shooting continues to be removed by someone. Tonight we'll hear uh, the Iron Range voices for ethnic and multicultural awareness who are asking the community to stop removing that memorial. Well, Dave's here for a final check of the weather. At least Kelly's sparkly because it's pretty gloomy outside. Yes, that's what I was <laughs> going to angle towards. Thanks for taking it away there, Kristen. <laughs> but we'll take it away into the seven-day forecast and say that it will stay non-sparkly through tomorrow. Maybe even Saturday as well, but at least by Saturday the rain ends. So cloudy but dry Saturday. Partially sunny and not bad Sunday. And then that gets you ready for a 50 to 60% chance for rain-snow mix hitting Monday and Tuesday. Overnight could be cool enough for a touch of snow to be part of that mix. Hope I didn't steal your thunder there, Dave. Ah. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you at 10.